In the last video, we made our way through California and caught the super bloom, spent some time in LA, and then drove up the coast and caught an incredible cloud inversion before making our way through San Francisco to the Redwoods, where we left off with a bunch of check engine lights and engine misfire codes on the van. After that, we started pushing towards the closest auto shop and we finally made it to Oregon, but I was a little bit scared that the van was gonna strand us somewhere with all of the engine lights. So we really only made a few stops on our way up the coast. Once we made it to the nearest town though, all the auto shops said that it was going to be at least a week before they'd be able to look at the van. But then I stumbled upon this place called Dr. D's Auto Care and they were so busy that I almost didn't stop, but I'm so glad that I did. The guys literally wheeled their toolbox out to the van in the pouring rain and looked at it on the spot. And apparently there was one specific like cylinder that kept misfiring. So he replaced one of the engine coils and then rubbed some of the carbon buildup on our like spark plug. Then we fired up the van and there were no codes and everything sounded good. If you're ever in Brookings, Oregon and find yourself having car trouble, definitely do yourself a favor and go to Dr. D's Auto Care. 10 out of 10 experience. So we made our way back to the coast with our fingers crossed that the check engine light didn't come back on. And of course, in pure Pacific Northwest fashion, it was pouring. But we still managed to stop at a few pretty cool spots. And then we got a little window of sunlight before the next storm rolled in. Even though it was pouring rain most of the time, which made taking photos pretty difficult, the Oregon coast was absolutely beautiful. There were so many little mountain roads just off the coast that take you up to public lands with tons of dispersed camping. And so far, the van was driving great and the check engine light didn't come back on. So we found a perfect little spot to camp and we spent a few days just exploring along the coast. But after being on the coast for a few weeks, I really wanted to camp near Mount Hood. So we drove all the way there only to find that it was in fact still winter at high elevations and all the national forest roads were still snowed in, which definitely was my own fault. I should have like known this, but I just acted on impulse instead of doing the logical thing and look it up beforehand. But we did manage to find a pretty cool spot to park with a view of Mount Hood. So it wasn't a total fail. The next morning we drove through Portland and the Columbia River Gorge on our way back to the coast. And I wish we could have spent more time in this area because it was absolutely beautiful. But we wanted to get back to the coast and find a camp spot before dark and to avoid rush hour going through Portland. But we had to at least stop and get a little glimpse of the skyline. Then we found a perfect camping spot up in the mountains just outside of Cannon Beach, and somehow we were the only ones up there. Love this spot so much that we stayed here for almost a week while we explored a bunch of spots along the coast.
And then one night on our way back to our camp spot, this happened. And I'm honestly still so mad at myself for this. I drove up this mountain road so many times with no issues, but one night on our way back up, I was trying to avoid a bunch of huge potholes and I just got too close to the soft edge of the road and the tire went over and we just completely sunk in and basically started sliding off the road. And, and I know it doesn't even look bad in these photos, but it really felt like we were gonna roll over in the moment. We quickly realized that if we tried to move anymore, we were just going to keep sliding further down off the road. So we were going to have to get pulled out. So we carefully got out of the van and of course realized that we literally had no service. There was service up at our camp spot, but that was still like three to four miles up the mountain road. But we were a lot closer to the highway. So we walked down to the highway and walked for almost a mile and finally got a little bar of service and were able to call AAA. We got disconnected with them multiple times, but they did say that they were going to try to get somebody out to us and so we just waited and kept our fingers crossed that somebody was going to come but then about an hour later a tow truck showed up and very slowly and carefully winched us out and I really wish I would have documented this part better but I was honestly just so frustrated with myself and it also made me realize how dumb we were to be out here with no service and no communication device no recovery gear not even an air compressor to be able to air down our tires so please let my stupid mistakes be a lesson for you to to always be prepared for something like this. Somehow there was no damage to the van done either, so it's safe to say that we are super grateful for Larry the legend, that's what we were calling him, for getting us out and teaching us honestly a super valuable lesson. So after all that, literally the next morning I woke up to an email with the final green light and confirmation about a few jobs that I had back in the Midwest for the summer, which the first one was literally less than a month away. So that really threw me a curveball that I wasn't expecting. When we left for this trip, I was planning to be gone for like six, seven months, at least until the fall. So I thought about just flying back to the Midwest and like leaving the van out west somewhere, but I wasn't super convinced on that. And we had like a month until we had to figure that out. So we did still have time. But with that in mind, we decided to just keep pushing into Washington and head towards the Olympic Peninsula where we planned to meet up with a friend. Once we made it into Washington, we found a spot to camp just outside of the national park boundaries. And the next morning, we just explored around the park. We were hoping for rain in the rainforest, but it was supposed to be hot and sunny for the next four days. And we did go on a couple of hikes, but I didn't shoot very much. And even though it wasn't the lighting I was expecting, it was still absolutely beautiful and so cool to finally see in person. And we even got to see an elk on the trail. Then we found an amazing camp spot right on the river and it was absolutely stunning. I mean, look at that watercolor. The next day was the first really hot day of the trip, which was really only like 75 degrees Fahrenheit, but I had been dying to jump in the ocean this entire time, so I had to do it. a shower because I literally smelled like the ocean so we headed into the nearest town to do that and that's when we realized that our house battery had stopped charging. We don't have solar in the van yet so the only way that our house battery charges is through the alternator when we drive and we drove for almost 45 minutes and it didn't charge at all where normally it would have been almost fully charged. The van battery's voltage was low even with the van like running which is a, not a good sign and it's a sign that the alternator could be going out. When 
when we installed this whole battery system, I thought we might have to upgrade our you know, alternator to charge the battery, but we had been driving for almost two and a half months straight, charging the battery every single day like that, and we had no issues. And sadly, the access road up into the Cascades was closed because of a huge fire at the visitor center. So knowing we couldn't get up into the mountains there, we decided to just keep pushing towards the nearest town to get the alternator checked out. And the closest major town was Port Angeles, which was an hour and a half away, so we just started heading that way and sadly that meant skipping through a bunch of spots that we planned to see along the way. But we couldn't help it and we had to make at least one stop. and had them check the alternator and the diodes failed the test so it was confirmed that we did need a new alternator. The problem was that Andrew and I didn't know how to replace the alternator at the time and we didn't want to buy one at O'Reilly's knowing that we weren't going to be able to get into a shop to have them replace it but then the girl at O'Reilly's is like oh we have someone that can replace it for you no problem like what? So sure enough at 9 a.m in the middle of Washington we sat outside the O'Reilly's while he replaced our alternator and it literally only took 15 minutes and he even showed Andrew how to do it so I'm pretty confident that next time we can just do it ourselves but when he finished we fired up the van and sure enough the battery started charging and everything went back to normal so it was the alternator that was the problem then when I asked him how much I owed him he said oh I don't want anything just enjoy your trip and I, I refused and I was adamant that we at least pay him something but he literally would not accept it he was like it's not even about the money I'm just happy to help like literally I can't even make this up how did we get so lucky the people in the Pacific Northwest are honestly so kind huge shout out to Chelsea and Mike at the O'Reilly's in Port Angeles in Washington. If you're ever in the area and you happen to run into car trouble, make this your first stop. They were literally lifesavers and saved us so much time and money. And again, just like that, due to some super kind humans, we were officially back on the road. And since we couldn't go up into the Cascades, we decided to just keep pushing towards Seattle. Our friend that lives there actually got really sick and couldn't meet up, so we just walked around downtown a little bit. And in the very little bit of time we spent there, I really liked Seattle and I already can't wait to come back when we have more time. This is when we fully decided that it would make the most sense to just drive back to Michigan for the end of summer instead of fly. But it was not an easy decision though, let me tell you. So with all that said, we decided to just drive up Highway 20 into the North Cascades and then slowly start making our way back east. I didn't film that much, but it was absolutely stunning, and I did take a ton of photos. And for those of you that don't know, the initial inspiration for me to start car camping was watching Andrew Kern's vlogs and him living in his Prius and his Forerunner in the Pacific Northwest. A lot of these spots that we're stopping at were spots that I saved watching his videos a long time ago. It's crazy because back then it felt so out of reach to get here. So it was amazing to finally get to see some of these places in person. We started heading towards Montana and Glacier, but then the smoke from the fires in Canada got intense. And then going down a mountain pass, we stopped at a rest area to use a bathroom and the van just went into full limp mode. The power steering went out and everything completely stopped. All the warning lights came on, our oil pressure gauge, every single light on the van was on. And after going into full panic mode, we basically called my friend Paul, who knows a lot about cars, and he asked us to check a few things, and he's like, everything seems fine to me. I would just try to start it. So we started it back up, and no check engine light or anything. But honestly, I really don't know what happened. So after getting the van to start, we were kind of worried about going straight into Glacier, where there's no service, and we didn't want this to happen again. So we unfortunately made the decision to skip Glacier and just head towards Yellowstone and Cody, which is where my friend Shalee lives, and that would be our last real stop before heading back to Michigan. We made it to Yellowstone and it was still a little smoky, but it was much better than northern Montana. The van had been driving fine and the check engine light didn't come back on, so we decided to just roll with it and keep our fingers crossed. The 
park ended up being pretty crowded, which was to be expected and usually why we don't prioritize national parks. But honestly, it was worth dealing with a little bit of crowds. It was so cool to finally see such a crazy landscape in person. started making our way east the next morning, but we still had to make one more stop. Like I said, my friend Shali lives in Wyoming just outside of Yellowstone. Unfortunately, she wasn't even home. She was in Egypt because we just timed things great. We checked out a few of the local places around Cody that Shali recommended, and I don't know why I wasn't expecting Wyoming to be so beautiful, but man, was I wrong. Then we got to see our first grizzly bear of the trip, which was super exciting and totally unexpected. We basically just saw it crossing the river. We were like up on top of the mountain and it was down at the bottom, kind of crossing the river. It was too far away to be to get any good shots or for it to be in danger, but it was such a cool experience and kind of a perfect way to end the trip. But after that, we pretty much just booked it all the way back east. I had less than a week before we had to be back in Ohio for a job, so we didn't really have that much time. And all I really documented was one clip of us staying at the world's largest truck stop for the last stop of the trip. But then after almost three months, 11,398 miles and 19 states, we officially made it back to Michigan. And I have so many thoughts to unpack from this trip, but I'll spare you guys the rambling for now. But just know that I did not come back the same person and I mean that in the best way possible. It was truly a life-changing trip that I cannot even put into words right now. I literally dreamed about going on a trip like this my entire life, and the fact that we finally made it happen still feels surreal. And I could not be more grateful for each and every one of you guys that follows me here, because if it wasn't for you guys, this trip would have never been possible. Things definitely didn't go to plan when it comes to content on this trip, that's for sure, but this trip truly exceeded my expectations in every other way. Like, when it just comes to to what I'm doing in life in general and just loving the experience of living on the road full time, all of that exceeded my expectations. And to me, that's what's most important. So seriously, from the bottom of my heart, thank you guys so much for all of the support over the last seven years. And if you guys watched this little series and stuck with me as I tried to piece together the story of this trip with the little footage that I did have, thank you guys so much. I cannot even explain how excited I am to finally have these videos finished so that I can go back to posting in real time again. So yeah, that's it for this one. I just want to end it all in one video here. And like I said, I will share more thoughts on the trip. So stay Stay tuned for that and thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and I'll see you in the next one.